So hi everyone, this is U-Boot and today I will show you a very common symptom on this 272 engines which is operated on this C230W203 Occasionally, this fault will trigger the check engine light on the instrument panel but the symptom is not very clear For example, in the morning you will see the check engine light but after a while it will turn, it will turn off So this is after we've done a quick scan on our scanners and as you can see, we have a fault code that related to the secondary air injections at left bank of cylinders. This is our secondary air injections and in today's videos, we're gonna find out what it is used for and how can we measure it. So before fixing our problems related to the P0410 fault code, let's take a look at the schematic diagram of the whole air injection systems. The engine control module N3-10 will control the secondary air pump M33 and simultaneously open and close the air pump switch over valve Y32. The air injection more rapidly warms up the catalytic converters to operating temperatures and thus improves the exhaust emissions values in the warming up phase. So the air pump relay and the air pump switch over valve are actuated by the ECM together for a maximum of 40 seconds following engine start if the following conditions are fulfilled. The coolant temperature must be below 35 degrees Celsius and the engine is running. To be more specific, if the electric air pump is actuated over the air pump relay, it suctions in injected air from the tight air filter housing and delivers it to the combination valve. The switch over valve air pump actuated parallel to the air pump. In this way, vacuum travels from the intake manifold to the aneroid capsules from the combination valve. The combination valves opens and the air delivered by the air pump is pushed through the holes to the outlet ports. And the check valves are integrated into the combination valves which prevents reverse currents of hot exhaust into the combination valve and air pump. The injected air reacts with the hot exhaust gases in the outlet port and oxidation of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons take place and results in an additional increase in the exhaust temperature. So with that being said, our problem is to check whether there is any signal to actuate the switch over valve. Is the valve malfunctioning itself or the air pump is not working properly? And last but not least is our shutoff valve is being stuck. We're going to check them sequentially. The M33, which is our secondary air pump, has two wires. One is for the crowd and another one is for the actuation voltage signal. Then the Y32, which is our air pump switch over valve, is also has two wires. One for power 87 and the other one is for the actuation ground signal. According to the schematic diagram, that I've shown you earlier, this is the secondary air pump which has two wires and a solenoid to simultaneously open and close our two shut up valves allowing the air to enter our catalytic converters. We're going to check the power and actuation signal coming to these components. And by the way, this is our front SAM which plays a major part in supplying the power to our systems. So first of all, I'm going to start by activating our pump and solenoid using the scan tool. And if it's working, we can say that there is a signal coming to these components. And because they are operating simultaneously, so we just need to activate one of them. So I don't know if you're hearing or not, but our air pump is not working right now, even though the solenoid is working because I heard a click in it. I will do it one more time. As you might see, the solenoid is working, but our air pump is not. If it's sucking in, my hand should be sticking to it. At this point, the problem comes down to our air pump obviously, so we're going to measure it.
And according to the wiring diagrams, I'm going to measure the continuity to crowd and the continuity to L power, which is the front SAM, and especially the 40 amp fuse. As you can see, the wire is not opened, which means our crowd is present. Then go ahead to the fuse and you can see that our circuit is good. Moving on, let's see if our pump is still usable by measuring its resistance. And due to the document, the specific resistance values of the air pump will be below 1 ohms. But what we have here is above 20, which is way higher than our specs. Now we can say that our pump is high resistance. And because it is a brush motor, it could be the contact point that is not good. We can either clean the brush or replace the motors. So this is a brand new air pump and by the way, I will measure its resistance. So you can obviously see that its resistance is below 1 ohms on the multimeters which is appropriated in our specifications. Now I will install it on the engines and see whether our problem is fixed. So in the next step, I will clear the full coat and actuate the air pump to see if it's working. You can hear it, it's working now. When it's operating, I will feel the suctions that it makes. And for safety reasons, you should only actually need less than 3 minutes. And at this point, I can say that our problem is fixed. And to recap, when the air pump is not operating, it won't open the shutoff valve to allow the air to enter the catalytic converters. And by that time, the oxygen sensor will detect the lack of air and triggers a full coat onto our scanners. I hope you will have more knowledge after watching these videos. If you enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe to support our channels. Thanks for watching and see you next time.